Good afternoon, everybody. This is Linda. Just haven't done a video for a while, so I wanted to get one and do a video. Um, my channel is about lifestyle for the woman who is 50 plus. And, uh, you know, some of the things, and I've said this before, is that I don't feel like we have to hide in the shadows and um, go somewhere and sit down. That I feel like that we can be vibrant and powerfully, beautifully um, age and be okay with that and that we can wear the styles that we want to wear you don't have to always have short hair but if you do that's fine too that you can wear vibrant clothes and be a vibrant being right into the end some of the things i do is that i am a life coach and i'm also an end of life coach or death uh doula and i know a lot of people haven't heard of that but it is someone that coaches people, supports people as they go through the end of life. And working in that environment, being a part of that environment, and it's a great combination to be a life coach and an end of life coach. Because it really goes through the gamut and the lifespan of a person's life. The ups and downs and then finally bringing all of your lifespan to a culmination and then how do you deal with that? So that's some of the things I do. But in between the end and the beginning is all of life and all of that it entails. The goods, the bads, the triumphs and all of that. And so this channel is about living a full and vibrant life. And I target women and women, especially 50 plus or whatever, but really I target women um, and I target people to and try to live a very good and full life that's the whole thing about it because when you get to the end of life what is important is the relationships that you've built the life that you have built and what makes it full and inviting and exciting is that you have lived your life the best life you could all the way up to the end and that um being in both spectrums of this as someone who coaches people makes me passionate about encouraging people to live your life fully. And pretty much that's it. To live your life fully. Let go of a lot of crap. <laughs> you know, who did what? Are you holding on to baggage and unforgiveness from 20 years past? Are you still upset with the lover that left you 20 years ago? Get over it. <laughs> and I know that sounds bad, but it's time to move on. And it's time for you to live a good and a full life. How do you do that? That is what I'm here for. One of the things that you do is that you have to let go of a lot of baggage. Some things we can do something about in life. Um, we can change ourselves. We can be responsible for ourselves. We can do things to improve you. You can take ownership and accountability for you and your life. But basically, you have no control over what other people do. And sometimes that is the secret to things, to give up having to control somebody else. You cannot control other people. <laughs> you know, that is up to them and God. You have to leave that there and you have to accept what can be, what you can change and accept those things that you can't change and keep moving, keep moving forward, keep evolving, keep growing. For me, what gets me through a lot of situations, a lot, sometimes hardship, loss, whatever in life is spirituality, my connection to God. That has, to me, that's my secret to life. That is my uh, <laughs> secret and though it's not a secret because I would tell obviously anybody but that is how I get through so many things that I've come through in my life is my connection to God it's one of the most important things of my life it's the connection that I try to keep going keep vibrant every day of my life um, and it allows me even in those times when I don't know what I'm gonna do and we all have those times like or I don't know what I'm going to do. 
there is always an answer that comes. And I truly believe that God has placed in us a, a powerhouse of wisdom that we can tap into at any time. But in order to tap into that wisdom that is a direct download from God, the power source of all power sources, is that you have to be still. There is a saying in the Bible, be still and know that I am God. And so sometimes I feel like that's how we miss out on so many things is that we don't take the time to be still. And as one, as a person that works with people at the end of life, I realize that is a very sacred time because God has totally stilled the person. You know, it's a time when physically, maybe even mentally, they are stilled whether they want to be or not. And sometimes I have the most profound conversations with people when they have had this time to steal, to reflect, and to go over some things in their lives. Some of the conversations that I've had with people have been so profound. And one of the gifts that a lot of them have given me, more than money, more than gold in anything, is savor your relationships. Savor those relationships because at the end of the day, and at the end of life, it is the relationships with the, those that you love, which really throughout your lifetime is some of the most important things, important, important things that will bring you joy and comfort. And yeah, sometimes some of the relationships we have with loved ones can be, you know, challenging, sometimes uncomfortable, bring us to, but even in those moments when those relationships challenge us and make us, you know, just wonder how in the world will I get through this? You, at the end of the journey of whatever the challenge is in any relationship, you have learned, most of the time you have grown and it helps you and had, it has helped you be the best person that you can be. A lot of times if I look back over love relationships, over business relationships, over family relationships, it's usually the people that I've had the most difficult time with that I have learned the most from. So much that it carried me through, through life and knowing what I did or did not want, what I, the boundaries that I needed to set that so that I wouldn't go through that again, they were great teachers for me. And sometimes the failures in life, we look like, oh God, I failed at that, I didn't. But look at it as teaching moments. That's what I see those failures in life as teaching moments. What did you learn from that? If it was no more than I won't do that again, that's a learning. Sometimes that'll take you through five, 10 more years of life that you learn, hey, this is a boundary. I'm not going through what I went through five years ago, so I won't do that again. You know, those kind of things. So, you know, and I'm getting back to the spirituality, you know, that has been for me to be able to quiet myself in a difficult moment or when I'm making a very uh, almost life-changing decision to be able to quiet myself, meditate, and listen and hear from God has been life-changing um, a lot of times for me. And sometimes it's just for me to quiet my being. Sometimes we can just get so stressed, so worked up from the day-to-day -day and hustle bustle of life just to take moments to quiet yourself, to hear the still small voice inside of you when we take those moments, we gain, we gain wisdom, understanding, and just the ability to calm ourselves in the storm. So what am I saying with all of this? I encourage you to seek God, have quiet time, meditation, whatever you choose to call it, where you listen to the voice within and then you learn from that, grow from that, and move on. These are just my moments today. I guess I can call these defining moments, these small little things that I gather that in life are defining moments. So this would be my defining moment today as I work with, and I feel like I'm gleaning knowledge 
from both aspects of life, from those who are living life and living life fully and passionately, and from those who are at the end of life. And I glean from what their experience is. And then I try to bring those back to you to help us all get through. Have a very, very great day. I'll see you real soon on my channel, Powerfully You. So be blessed, be powerful, be quiet. Have a great day. Bye.